Agency Nation Radio out there, what is going on? Probably wondering who in the heck this is. Guest host in the show. I was a guest actually on the show with guest host Heath Sheeran a few, maybe a month or so ago. And I appreciate Heath having me on, having me on and Agency Nation stayed after me and was like, hey, <laughs> you mind sticking around and uh, maybe doing a couple guest hosted shows for us? And, and absolutely, I said yes, because as I talked about on my own podcast and stuff that I do is we're in this industry to change the industry one and also help one another and, and be there for one another to make a difference in this industry. We're all in it together. And it's guys like this next guest that we're going to have on the Agency Nation radio, Jason Walker, who is the CEO and founder of Agency and SureTech. Man, does he have some really cool things coming along. And, and, and I can't wait to dive into that and see where the modernization of data and analytics and see where those for that platform and where where this industry is leading us down the way. And hopefully we can get into that pretty quickly here. But at first, I want to thank Jason for joining the show today and look forward to diving into some stuff here with you, Jason. Thank you, Mitch. Appreciate being on here and happy that everybody's tuning in, probably more so since you're hosting versus me. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have to admit, because I, I admit my mistakes, we were recording this 20 minutes after I had, we had had it planned because I decided to stick around the Mexican restaurant and eat, eat some more chips and salsa too late. So <laughs> I'm already behind the eight ball a little bit, but I'm looking forward to bringing you guys a great episode and appreciate the Agency Nation team for giving me an opportunity to host a show and bring some amazing content to your guys' ears and eyes and hopefully continue to help us change the industry. So Jason, I guess without further ado, man, instead of diving into what you do right now, how we've got these questions or how I've got this kind of laid out here in my mind, it probably won't go the way it is because of the ADHD. <laughs> but as far as where the industry has came just within the short past five years, let alone the last 25 years, with what you guys are doing over at Agency InsureTech, where do you personally, insurance professionals, see this industry going on the data and analytics and, and digital side of things? Yeah, I appreciate the question because it's timely. As you know, Mitch, we've seen this influx of insurance technology firms that are just bombarding the space at this point. And what I like about that is a lot of the insure techs are focusing more and more on the agency channel and trying to enable both growth and retention. But you can probably imagine with all these new tools and technologies that are pouring into the space, it's creating a lot more data to be able to capture and leverage and do something with it in order to help prescribe and predict what we should do as agents. And so what I've noticed is you've watched in the past a lot of these solutions that would almost treat data as just this quick reporting byproduct, but there was really no emphasis behind how to leverage it or how to use it to drive growth and retention on behalf of the business. And now what I've seen is this movement with platforms that are coming into the space specific to agents that are taking that data or even starting to enrich data that is already owned by the agency in order to be able to make those communications and those relationships much richer between the customer and the agent. So I think what we've noticed is data is kind of a reporting mechanism now moving into platforms and really driving the next six actions that we'll take with our prospects and our customers. And I think you're right. And going down to even just like being on the insurance agent side, on the agency side of things, there's all types of products out there, like we've just said. Obviously, none, not one is better than the other. The reason why it's so cool is it's like an a la carte program. I mean, what works best for me here? What works best for me there? And you know, I'm going to build this ice cream sundae that's going to help me sell and keep and, and generate business for the longevity of you know where we're headed as an agency. But there's going to come to a time where, you know, Jason, and this is kind of an opinionated question, maybe, just because that's been in the thought of my mind, we're going to see the tech. And if you're, you're not watching this on the, the show or whatever here, but I've kind of got an upside down triangle where I consider that as a funnel. And I see all these insure tech carriers in there funneling down slowly, 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 slowly into what could become just a conglomerate of this is the services we can offer, what works best for you. The more tech, less company aspect of things. Do you see that happening or is it more so it's too young in this you know, process of the industry that there's so many ways, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, we may not ever even get to that situation or even live the lifetime where one company owns it all? Yeah, I don't think it's one company owns it all. I think that's why we've watched major management systems create these ecosystems where they are trying to create partners that are helping fill gaps or holes that maybe the main solution that most agencies live out of today are searching for bolt-ons. And we're watching that embracing of those tech solutions. Of course, sometimes you'll see a roll-up 
of a product that maybe will enhance the overarching greater product. But then there's just six more that are introduced to be able to take care of some niche line of business that no one thought of before, but now there's a semblance of automation plus that human component. So it's a long-winded way of saying, I don't think that you'll ever see this monopoly where one company kind of has it all because there's innovation happening every day. And just like any other industry, we've seen it in retail, we've seen it in automotive, we've seen it in travel. It's constantly changing for the betterment of the customer at the end of the day, but also helping empower those that are ultimately communicating and working with that customer. And in this case, agents themselves. Which I think is cool because you're starting to see, even if it's some of these younger carriers that are starting to come about, having going with the open API system idea. And that opens up a heck of a lot of difference with marketing and, and advertising and branding to where if people can just get on their phone and go quote it based off the website and know that they're going to quote the correct limits because you're not going to give them another option and they bind it and issue it without even talking to you. I mean, it's scary probably for a lot of agencies now because of the mail pail and stale and older generation agents out there who are close to retirement, which is well-deserved, but you know, those guys could care less to learn about it. It's trying to convince and show guys like me, who's the 25, 26-year-old young punk agent out there trying to you know, rule the world, how, how is this going to benefit us? And I think you can probably agree with me here. It's probably a good thing that everybody starts paying attention to it now because it's probably not going away and it's only going to get more intuitive and, and a lot more difficult if you're going to be behind the eight ball. And I think you can probably piggyback off of that agreeing. Yeah. So as part of what I do at Agency InsureTech, I work with agencies and help them back into technology solutions that kind of fill gaps where they may want to just get rid of kind of these rote activities. And so one of the things that keeps coming up is the next generation of the people that are coming into the business and how will they start to adopt the technologies and how can an agency attract talent that's young and that conversation continues to take place. So those that may be in that retirement phase are absolutely saying, we want to make sure that this business is set up for that next generation. So instead of talking to me, talk to my son or daughter or whoever else has acquired the business. But ultimately, that conversation is around being a digital native, wrapping in more and more technology and tools that start to take out that transactional business. I think there is a way for automation to take the majority of it. But that doesn't mean then that we sit back and rest on our laurels. Agencies are continually communicating. I want to make sure that that's automated so I can go into some of the business that requires a lot of handholding along the way. And I think that's kind of the ebb and flow of the business we see today. And I think it's not just the, you know, hey, I'm trying to do this because I'm lazy. And there's probably going to be a big group of people that we see fail because they think the automation is going to take care of themselves and don't understand the servicing aspect of it. Yeah, you can service with apps and stuff out there that are these technology and these tech companies are coming up with and creating, which are great, but it's the same token of, is everybody, even if it's a guy that's 30, 40 years old, I mean, he's still got 20 years of doing business with you, hopefully, but not if you don't take care of him, not if you don't call him, not if you he doesn't ever see your face. All he sees is a text message or an email from you. I firmly believe you still have to have the alternative of contact other than just, I've touched, when I say touched, I've texted, called, emailed, whatever, four times in a year to this person. Okay. But you didn't follow up within the first three years you've had his policy. Right. And you probably haven't shopped it around in that case. So I think it's going to be the, the survival of the fittest. Who's going to buy into what it, what it is, but who's still going to see the other half of it. And I'm thankful I've grown up or I've worked now an agency for four years and I've seen the involvement of how important some of that older generation stuff is still to this date and still will be because people still like tangible things. I think you've touched on something I haven't heard many articulate. So kudos to you for talking about the fact that I think there's this approach where younger generations are like, all right, just get out of the way because I know how it's going to be done. And if I go into any other industry, I'm usually faced with technology and I love it and embrace it. That's great from a quick transaction on the retail side. But when you're thinking about protecting someone's risk and having those heartfelt conversations and building that relationship, as much as An older generation can learn and needs to learn about the technology movement. The same can be said for the other side, which you're pointing out, which is everyone must understand what was because what was still exists in this industry and won't go away. And it's the relationship side of it. And data, the kind of the premise for this conversation, ultimately should just help enrich how far you can go in that hand-to-hand combat and those relationships. 
Absolutely. How are you going to take this data that's artificially intelligence way of giving you here is a playbook of how to win? How are you going to learn from the playbook? There's a thousand ways to do it. Like we just said, there's a thousand ways to do everything. But how are you going to take the information, the data from whatever this is, this platform is, and put it into real life, you know, cross-selling? They're not happy enough because he's having a billing issue with EFT every single month that he's not getting his bills sent to him directly. I mean, that's it's a little thing, but daggone it, that could make him be really ticked off and leave you. And then he goes down the road and you see that he started a construction business and now is a multi-millionaire because he's a <laughs> contractor. I love that we talked about that, the use of how you're going to use the data analytics to become successful. But you still said it still goes back to the groundwork that was laid before we, before I even started in the industry that made everything successful to where it is now. And you can't forget about that. I mean, it's, it's history. It's put it in a history book, you know? <laughs> well, I, you know? I will actually just build on that one step further and say that insure techs themselves should start to listen to that particular conversation too. And I'm noticing, cause I help run a couple of customer advisory boards and what the smart insure techs are doing is they're bringing agencies all swaths of life and age and putting them in the same room and saying, all right, we've delivered to this point, this technology, you seem to like it. There are places we can improve. But now the next steps are we need to take out of your brain and try to mimic what you've done over a lifetime and put it into a system. And it needs to follow those activities that have been proven over decades. And I like that the insurer techs that really care about that process and workflow and how to leverage if they're trying to enrich data, hey agency, what would you like to see and what would your next action be so that I can now tell the system to do that? That's where we need to perfect it from the technology side. I love that. And I think what you guys are doing is is helping not just yourselves, but also all agencies and all insure techs. I mean, you guys all are, are in it for the same thing, obviously, but everybody's got a little bit different of something. And if we can all help each other out, then why not? And that's what I love about it is it's no matter who your competitors are, they're still always there to help and bounce ideas off of because they want to help get it around just as much as you do. And the more you get it into agencies' hands and we learn it and be able to provide the experience and share with you what's working, what's not working. And it helps you go back into the drawing table and make some changes and whatever it might be. And that kind of leads me into where I wanted to kind of have this conversation with you now. What led you down the agency and SureTech side? Because you've had to experience something that you didn't believe in or didn't like at some point in time and said, I want to make a solution out of it. That's what I've kind of noticed with these insure tech guys is they've loved what they've done, whether it's on an insurance side carrier or something. And then they say, there's an issue here that needs to be solved. I want to figure it out. And they do. So what's your story, man? What's What led you here and what, what, what's been so rewarding so far? So I led a company called Smart Harbor, which was a digital marketing and technology firm that specifically provided solutions to independent insurance agencies. And if you look back at it now, I mean, these are websites, SEO, paid advertising, social email. And then we started to build out smart forms right before we were acquired by ITC. And in that entire process, what I noticed was we were such a small bite-sized portion of the overarching agency stack, everything that they needed in order to be able to conduct business. And so we weren't ripe with capital. We were basically living off of our own revenue, bootstrap, all that good story. But what that forced me to do very quickly is go look at all of the insurance technology firms that were helping support everything that Smart Harbor wasn't. And there was a lot that we weren't doing on behalf of the agency. But in my mind, I was like, we need an ecosystem of all these connected solutions and services so that an agency is just comfortable with running process A to Z. They don't even care about our brands, really. They just want to be able to do something from beginning to end. And so once sold the business, it was, let's start helping connect the distribution channel of agencies with the technologies that care about them and start to create this visualization and categorization of all the solutions and technologies in the space and where they have to make handoffs in order to make the agent and their customers' life better. And that really just spun up agency and sure tech to help make that happen, to execute. A lot of people like to talk, but they don't like to roll up their sleeves. Just roll up sleeves, put the hard hat on and the lunch pail and go go That's blue right. collar days. But <laughs> obviously with the customers that you've you know helped out and, and currently serve to this date and this, these agencies, is there a specific story or any, you know, I guess a testimonial that really hits home to you and is like, but this is the reason why we're doing what we're doing and why this is going to be so successful for agencies down the road? Yeah, I think it's honestly, it kind of goes back to the beginning of this discussion. It is the challenge 
of thinking about putting technology into the business where in the good old days, intuition won the day. And it still kind of rules the day because I will hear over and over again, oh, you know what? I don't even touch that solution, even though we've invested in it. And the reason why is because I know immediately which set of carriers I should be going to, to rate quote bind. This solution really just takes me more time. But the part that's being lost in that discussion is once you're done and want to hang up the hat, what about the next 70 people that are going to follow in that lineage to keep that business perpetuated? And it comes down to this cultural shift of how we did business versus how we're going to do business and everybody rallying around the adoption of solutions that will make their lives simpler without making anyone fear that it's going to displace them because we've already established it can't. And so it's that fundamental challenge of really getting the people plus the technology to meld together that excites me on a day in, day out basis and not just buying a solution just for the sake of saying I did it because 3,000 other agencies did it. It has to be more than that. It has to be around the needs of the business and where they plan to go next and putting that all together. So it's like a puzzle and fitting a bunch of pieces together and having some real difficult conversation. I can kind of piggyback off of that because... I'm kind of in that category, right? With not just my age, but also where I work. And actually, there's a pretty cool story that... Actually, I shared with Jason before, but it's not the right time to share it yet. But it's pretty cool that I think you guys will all be uh, pretty happy about it. But kind of what I've dealt with you know, recently was you know, we just adopted DocuSign. In 2021, we we're just now using DocuSign. And they would... Or two of both the owners were standing right here and laugh because I mean, even Brent, he just sees it working. He's like... Yeah, great. I haven't printed a piece of paper since we got it. We updated our agency management system to this new, you know, the new AMS core and platform, whatever they've got. And I'm the only one who uses it. Yeah, I was the one that brought it up and thought it was a great idea. And it is because I haven't printed a piece of paper off. It helps me easily input prospects now where I was not even putting prospects in before. I was just taking the customer sheet that I have been writing on and giving it to my CSR and she puts it in. And once policy downloads, sends out a thank you email, that was it. This thing's allowed us to now allow, allow me, you know. So I've now been putting together this, the back end stuff, the automated stuff that's going to help some of the processing and lower the workload for the CSRs that are getting stuff thrown at them every single second. But it's, you know, they almost have to see it work before they believe in it. And it's not that they don't believe in it, I think. And I'm kind of hollering at the young agents here for a second, Jason. But it's not that they don't believe in it. It's just that where they've worked for the last 25, 30 years of their career, Ask yourself this. If someone said, hey, let's do this, would you want, do you think you want to learn that for two years or a year and a half before you retire? Heck no. I didn't even get the, one of the agency owners to log in for it. It wasn't going to help them out, right. but it will help the next person out if we use it the correct way. And if we all start coming on board with it, everybody's going to see how much it's going to help each, everybody out. And that's just the way technology is. But it's hard with that mental market at this level because all those agency owners are at that age of retirement. How are you guys working through that process with you know those middle market agencies who are trying to dive in or believe in the technology, but aren't sure if it's worth the time or effort? Or maybe that's just the issue is they just might not want the time and energy to learn it. I think what I've noticed, and maybe I've just been lucky, but those that I'm working with approach this, I hate the word, but transformation to technology by injecting some authenticity and some humility. So I will run kind of like whiteboarding sessions, for lack of better terms, where I bring in from the agency, leadership of the agency, and those at the execution layer. And there's about 10 to 15 people that will interact. And we'll go through all these exercises that sometimes make no sense to the people as they're going through them. But ultimately, what we're driving at is what are the most simple opportunities to be able to get quick wins for the entire agency Kind of like your DocuSign piece that you're bringing up is some of the what we maybe think is like, look at us, we're 2021, we're finally adopting DocuSign. But to put a product in place like that doesn't really require a lot of work from anyone else, but demonstrates the power very quickly from an e-signature perspective. That then incrementally tells us, oh, well, if that works that easily, I bet I was kind of pushing away these solutions because I thought it was going to take me a lot of time. Maybe I'll give them a chance. And so you have to stair step up and everybody that's in these sessions has to take that ego out of the play and they have to drop their titles. It's more so 
what are we just trying to do in the next 10 years or whatever? Very business 101 type of approach that's going to allow technology to relieve some of our lives so that the 20% or 10% that takes up the majority we have time for and we still have space in our day and our personal lives. And so it's kind of that approach where uh, I wrote for Agency Nation a while ago and the title was something of the first rule of technology. We don't talk about technology, kind of like Fight Club. Let's not approach it from that perspective. Let's approach it from the perspective that if I could have everything perfect for me, I'd get rid of these five things out of my workday. That's great. Now we'll figure out if there's something that can help you, or maybe sometimes you're just going to have to buck up and live with it. But getting down to that conversation is usually what opens up the world to everyone, and that's important. I don't know if this is going to get me in trouble when I say this, but you talked about the, you know, you get together and you drop the exec and you drop the name titles and everything. It helps I, the creativity it probably brings out in everybody too. I mean, just as you open your mind up to more things and new things, whether you believe in them or not, just see and learn because it's going to open your mind up to saying, oh, yeah, I could have used that. Or you get two years in a row and said, man, this would have been a sweet thing to incorporate right? <laughs> just on an automation standpoint. Have you heard of Canopy Connect? Yes. So I use Canopy Connect avidly. And where I think some people have used Canopy Connect is anytime when someone wants to vote, they send them that. I don't like that because depending on who it is I'm working on that quota prospect with, right? depending on, say, demographic, age-wise, I don't want to send that to Miss Sherry, who's 50 years old and is always on the go. So for me, it's going to be hard. I don't want her to log on to her phone. So I'm going to send her a different client intake form. Something you know, you you've got to be able to hybrid back and forth. Where the Canopy Connect platform has the reason why I'm saying I don't going to get in trouble. This is no paid ads. All right, no paid advertisement <laughs> here. I'm just using the example of how I've used technology in a sm- much smaller way instead of having everybody and the brothers do it. My mortgage lending referral and real estate referral partners have my Canopy Connect link. Refinances, new home purchases. The new home purchases are a little bit different on how we have our little trio going. That has helped me out on so many of his refinance customers where they're not on a refinance. They're going to spend so much time on the insurance piece. Mortgage lenders aren't. Right. They'll spend more time on that on the new purchase though. So if I gave him an avenue using a piece of technology, which is a link that he can now say, hey, steps on your refinance, make sure I get this, this, and this also follow up with this link to get your insurance comparison tool. I get their deck pages. <laughs> I just won an insurance battle by a link that I don't even tell him to click. So there's ways. I mean, it's just creativity. What you're describing is it complements what you're watching in the industry where we're seeing new age, I'll call it that, I guess, insurance agencies that are popping up that are figuring out how to put themselves into the middle of the home buying transaction, which is smart and simplistic. Again, we don't have to go leaps and bounds in order to be able to understand where just a little injection of technology matters to the business, but agencies that just have that single focus can then go and put themselves into a mortgage application like you're talking about. And by default, they're just going to get all of that flow of traffic moving forward. And it's that referral partnership that might drive the majority of your business. And so we're seeing that even if we tie it to the data play, because there's a huge data play there, capturing all this information on something that we in our lifestyle, we're making a big change, a life event, that life event information can be used and nurtured in such a way that it triggers the insurance add-on to it. Because we as consumers many times don't think about insurance except for when we legally need it or we experience something you know, that ultimately requires us to call it forward. So how do we put ourselves in, into the totality of birth to death, not to be morbid, where we can have our little piece of the pie where we might be an afterthought, but we're receiving that influx of business. You've done that. And we're watching a lot of insurance agencies come up out of nowhere and creating just those types of experiences. And then on the back end of the technology, so you've used it, you've got the business, right? Now let's look and say, because you know, the way they got it, you can create multiple different links. Now you've got data to see, oh, this mortgage lender sent me 12 this month. This mortgage lender sent me three. Just based off of seeing you know, what link he, that where it's coming from. I mean, that's great because then you can identify, I spend a lot of time with this mortgage lender and he's, you know, he's hasn't sent me the best of business. I'll still help him out if he needs it, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to spend more time with this guy. I mean, you've got to take care of your people and that's it. You know, you still have to take care of your people and network like they did in the old days because it matters. 
and it's the trust factor. And the technology is something that people are learning to trust and see that it does work. So if it's working, let's make it happen. You see what I'm saying? And I think that's probably what you're getting feedback on now is you're seeing so many agencies are getting good feedback that it's working, the process is working. You're excited. You said the excitement that you get, but then you have the thought in the back of your head of what's next. Where do you want to see agency and sure tech go? And is there anything out there that the industry needs to hear about what you guys do? Yeah, I appreciate that opportunity. There is something that has kind of soft launched. It's called Insurance Playground. It's insuranceplayground.com. And your question earlier about why did you go into this particular space, you must have noticed something that was missing. I've noticed that there's a lot of educational resources, great educational resources. And I've noticed that there's a lot of conferences with people on stage that say some great things. And then I would always sit there and look at the reaction of the agent that was in the crowd. And what usually happens is I'm going to say a bunch of great things on stage, I have my hands walk away. I'm going to tell you what you need to do, but I'm not going to help lead you to how to do it. And so I built Insurance Playground, which is a marketplace that is aggregating all of the insurance technology firms that are supporting insurance agencies. And I am codifying the entire landscape. So categorizing, whether it's prospecting tools, whether it's sales tools, servicing tools, you can get the idea. And then, so then an agent will come in and they'll be like, I just need some marketing tools. Great. Choose the marketing category, dive in and start to learn about and then do a comparative rate across three technologies and you can see them all on one page. And the profiles of these technology firms are as good as what they say about themselves publicly in five to six different places. We're just pulling it forward so the agent can look at it in one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's missing and it's, it's necessary. And so it's really there to just help agencies all free, 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 free. We cannot tell them what to do and throw up a paywall. <laughs> sure. You see, you see these insurance groups, mastermind groups, and even like young agents groups, but you don't see uh, the sites like Agency Intelligence has that structure of here is our, all of these show, insurance shows across the board, even Agency Nation. You know, here's all of the insurance companies because we want to help. Right. It's not, well, this is my, you know, same thing with you. Why not have a place that's one stop shop and can do exactly what you're trying to do? You're trying to drive traffic to it. We all get it, but you've set up something that's a one place that people can click to. And you said that was insuranceplayground.com? That's right. If you're on Facebook or LinkedIn, follow me, Mitch R. Gibson. You can see, I'll put that link up of that and then we'll kind of get the ball rolling on that. That's, that's pretty cool stuff and stuff that needs to be shared out there in the uh, public. But Jason, I'm going to take this from my boy Heath Sheeran for a second because he he's the mayor and he likes to give you the keys to the stage for a minute. But I'm going to give you the keys to the Agency Nation radio microphone. Anything that you think that agents young or old out there need to know? Or any advice? I want to hear what you got to say out there for all those people and and for the longevity of our industry and career. Yeah, I would say to approach everything with simplicity. And there's a quote that I don't have in front of me, but the whole point is sometimes when you approach something simplistically, it's the most complex action that you'll take. But once you can start to distill everything that you do, the choices that you make, down into something that's simple, like I just want to remove the fact that I have to put pen to paper on this particular workflow or process. If you can get yourself to think about those types of activities that you do on a day in and day out basis and say, I want to eliminate five of them. Great. That's a perfect start to then lead you towards, well, let me look at whether it's technology or maybe even a workflow change or a process that you just need to improve and do one pivot, take one pivot in your business That's really all that it takes to create this, what everybody calls transformation. And you'll be happier. You'll see the efficiencies. You'll see time gained back that you'll be able to focus on those things that really matter to your business. And you'll probably, whether you're trying to or not, see the increase of volume that's pouring through your business because you've been able to start to compartmentalize the way that you work and put technology over the things that really just keep you going, lights on, and then put your focus on the people and the relationships that no technology will ever replace. But just start with simplicity and your world will change pretty quickly. I love that college baseball coach always told us, 
Make the routine play routinely. I mean, yeah. same thing yeah. in the insurance. It's a better business. way to I say mean, it, Mitch. <laughs> it's, it, I get caught talking baseball terms so daggone much because I'm around it all the stop. My family plays baseball. We've all played, and it's it's always going to be in our life. And that's kind of the background behind my podcast if you go watch it or listen to it. But yeah, just make the routine plays routinely. Don't make this thing harder than it is. It does take time. It does take that three to four years. When, when your agency owner is saying, hey, give it three or four years, give it three or four years. I mean, I'm seeing it. Okay. Give it three or four years and just keep staying or being you. Keep adding value to yourself. Please keep adding value to your customers, your business partners. And like you said, I love the word pivot. We're not shifting. That's right. Just pivot. Pivot to it and give it a try. And if it works, let's go at it. So, Jason, if anyone out there listening would need any of your services, what's kind of the best contact way of getting in touch with you and anything else you got? It's all you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I have my calendar and it's in real time on my website. So I'll just give it to you. Agency, A-G-E-N-C-Y, insuretech, I-N-S-U-R-T-E-C-H dot com. Agency, dot com. You can schedule some time with me. Give me a call. If you just want to talk, I'm here to help independent insurance agencies because I believe in the space and I know that the space will just continue to evolve with agents, not without. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate that. I'm going to go in for the sake of my own, I guess, you know, excitement and energy. I like no matter what show I'm hosting, what show I'm doing, I like to ask these five questions to the guest, kind of like a little five rapid fire questions. So I guess to kind of start off, what's uh, wherever you live locally, is there a favorite local food restaurant you like to go to and check out that you and the family or yourself like to go and hang out at? Anything that's Cameron Mitchell. So there's this one CEO, Cameron Mitchell, that has restaurants across the Columbus area. You can't go wrong in any one of them. And they, they go up and down as far as the scale of cost, but the food's always magnificent. So Cameron Mitchell restaurants. That's what I like to hear. What's your favorite dessert or favorite sweet? Ooh, I would say lemon cake. That's what I have religiously on my birthday. <laughs> that's the first one all time I've heard. I like that. That's good. And that's really good. If you could spend 24 days with anybody dead or alive, who would it be? Did I say 24 days? I think I meant 24 hours. 24 days. <laughs> For 24 hours. If you could spend 24 hours with anybody, who would it be? I think Max Verstappen. So I'm an avid F1 racing fan. And right now he's on top. He's starting to take out the Mercedes team. And so it's historically a pretty big deal within the sport. And ultimately, I just want to be able to get in one of those cars and drive around one lap. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of cool. Remind me before you get off, I might have to have you come down to Indy. We ensure the the uh, indie racing experience the high speed two seater no company downtown Indy. yeah so we uh actually we're getting ready our office we're going to go we have not road but we we put on a pretty cool event last year for our first responders and gave away some rides but that's the first time i've been down there and seen them actually go and they go so that would be a super fun cool thing to, to do yeah so come on down it'd be fun i guess i'm gonna wrap it up here for you one quick last question but we all know where this industry is going. The foundation's been laid. We've got to do what we need to learn and grow and, and make a positive impact on this industry and keep it moving because I believe it's truly one of the best industries possible. And it's guys like Jason that make the industry fun and keeps making the industry fun and finding creative ways to do so. Jason, if there's one thing that you can say the insurance industry has taught you over your last you know years to let, let you now, the agency insure tech, what is that for us? Don't burn a bridge. And that might sound simple, and it actually has nothing to do with technology. I've noticed that this space has really authentic people within it, and everyone is willing to help. But I've watched some people take advantage of that and kind of go wayward. And you don't do that in the insurance. You shouldn't do it anywhere. But the insurance space is one that still depends on that human element. And just be authentic kind of goes back to the whole point of bringing everyone into a room. Drop the ego and don't burn a bridge. I love it. That's cool. That's a first too. I'm telling you right now, that's probably one of my favorite episodes. I've done insurance so far <laughs> across uh, just because it was different, something new, something that you don't ever hear too much about. There are some tech podcasts and stuff like that out there, but it's guys like Jason, the genuine authentic people out in the world that make this industry fun. Jason, dude, thank you so much, man. It's a pleasure meeting you and learning about what you're doing. Build a relationship here by first time meeting Jason and, and we'll, we'll continue to talk and build a relationship and you know, seeing what we can do to make a difference every day in this industry. So Jason, thanks, man. I really do appreciate you. Likewise, Mitch, thank you so much and great to meet you. And I'm going to be an avid follower as of today. So thank you. Absolutely, brother. Well, I appreciate your uh, support and everything you do. And there's always one thing I say too, and 
you can make a difference every single day in someone's life in this industry. And the insurance industry gives us each person or each individual, one of us, the chance to do that every day. So go out and make a difference. And thanks for listening to the Agency Nation podcast and have a good rest of your day. Take care, guys.